Hey everybody, welcome to Cousin Jack Car. So today we're gonna to wrap up our work on this little guy right here. You can see this is the finished product. And today we'll finish some detailing, get some depth, and of course, we'll have some fun. Now what I did to finish this guy, I, I did some wood burning after I finished carving. And I painted with acrylics. After that, I applied some walnut oil, and then I sealed it with some water-based polyacrylic, and then finally, the good old turd polish uh, that I learned from Chris Hammock. So, have some fun. If you haven't seen the video that I did about painting and antiquing, uh, that will give you a clue on how to finish this if you want this kind of a look. Let's get started. So, we we'll take a look at where we left off here. You can see this is the right side of the body, and we kind of shaped where the arm and the shoe and the coat, various things are. And this is where we're going to, all right? You can see that I've worked on his right arm and his right side of his body. So you can see that I've brought out that arm, I shaped that hand, I worked on rounding that jug some, and then I also rounded the front corner of that hat, brought out that brim. You can see on the back here, I carried the brim around trimmed his hair for him and then uh, yeah did some work on this side I figure I will show you what I did when we do it over here remember I told you I was going to take this arm and push it back off of that knee right to round that arm and that's important right like I said earlier in the second part we don't want to have corners on our arms all right so let's get busy We'll go ahead and bring out his left arm. And I'll just go back here behind his arm a little bit, working on some more depth today. What knife are you using? So today, thank you, Sonny, I have do, I'm doing something I've never, ever done before. I'm carving, whittling in a hotel room Today is our 34th wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary, Sonny. Thank you. And we are on vacation. So here we are, <laughs> whittling in the hotel room. And yes, this is a Stanley 199, and I have the Lennox Gold blades in it. I will put a link, I will put links in the description below the video, if you're interested in learning more about them, you'll be able to see what they are and where I find them. I do recommend things to you, and you know, if I do recommend it, that means I use it. It's something that I believe in and I have had good results with. If I didn't, I would not recommend it to you. Bringing down that coat a little bit more. Like I said, we want to get some depth, and once we have that depth, we'll be able to do some more rounding on these arms. So bring that beard down a little bit here, get more depth for the front of the arm. And we'll come into the corner, give it a little triangle cut. that. And I mentioned to you before the um, thing about working as a new carver, relatively novice carver, very often uh, there's just not that depth that's needed. It's something that will come with time. And part of, I guess, gaining experience as a carver is just really gaining confidence, feeling confident, knowing what you're doing, where you're going, and how to get there. And that's part of the joy of this hobby, is the journey. You've heard me say that before. So I'm bringing down a little bit of the beard and mustache area. And like I said in part two, there's plenty 
of wood to work with there. Yeah, we got a little booger next to his nose here. We'll get rid of that. All right, so as I did over here, I'm gonna push the arm back a little bit off of the shoe. This is something that shows up in the original. You can see right here, that shoe, and the arm comes back off of the shoe a little bit here at the front, right? Because the arm is rounded. So let's do that. Let's bring that arm back a little bit here. Trim down that sleeve. So now that we have some more depth for the arm, what I'll do next is sort of round it some more. And to achieve that, let me just look at it from behind for a second. Yeah. I want to push the shoulder in at the top. So I'm going to come up to about here and bring that in some more. Okay, so to round these arms, you're going to come over to the edge and give it a little angle, like that. Get out of you. All right. Now, I think what I'll want to do, too, is give it a little bit more of a little corner fold here at the elbow bend. So I'm just going to come in here with the tip of the knife from this angle. And then from this angle like this, I'll just take a little wedge out there. And then like I say, we'll continue with the rounding. So I brought several of my tools with me on this trip because we figured this would be an opportunity to get a video done for you. And really, this should be wrapping up this particular series. This tutorial series is three parts total, and this is part three. And we want to get it done. Um, Sonny and I both are occupied during the week. The only thing we weren't certain about would be you know, the lighting in the hotel room, things like that. All right, so you can see now we've pushed that arm back off of the shoe a little bit and rounded it, shaped it some. So the next thing I'll do is come over here and shape this hand. We left a pretty good block of wood over here because we knew we were gonna put a hand in there. And you can see I've already worked on what would be his right hand. And let me show you a little bit about what I was going for here. When we think about the hand, there are some you know, major planes to the hand, and it can be very, very detailed, depending upon what you're going to do, because there are so many different joints in each finger and different planes to the hand. In this particular situation, these are relatively small hands, so really what I wanted to do was develop two primary planes. This plane, behind the knuckles, and one plane here in front of the knuckles. Not a lot of detail in that, but enough detail to show that there are at least those two primary planes. Again, this is a really small hand, so that's what I was going for. Now, the thumb is going to be here at the top. Same thing on this side. So we'll come over here. I'm going to turn it upside down because I'm a lefty. And I'll put in where the top of that thumb will be. Just remove a little piece of wood there. I'm going to 
trim this hand to get back to the wrist, which is coming back into the sleeve over here. Same thing at the bottom. The wrist is going to angle back into the sleeve. I'm going to take out this little piece of wood right there. Yep. I'm just taking a look at the two hands together here. This one's still a little bit larger. Now I want to develop that plane again. So I've got a little bit of an angle here. And just going to clean up that angle there. Yeah. So one of the things, I guess if you want to think about it as an advantage to using a utility knife with a utility blade is that if you don't have great sharpening skills, the utility blade will certainly be sharp for you. Um, I do also <laughs> sharpen them up a little, strop them some, and, and get them to be a little bit sharper than they are just factory out of the package. But you could certainly use them right out of the package. All right, so I think we've got that hand shaped pretty well. I'm going to come in here and get more depth on this side of the jug. I want that jug to kind of disappear back into this little crevice so it appears to have some real roundness to it. And when you're rounding this jug, you know, very often it's a situation where you could be working across the grain. There are different tools you can use for that. Um, one of them I want to show to you. This is what's called a broad axe knife. This is a small broad axe from Helvey. And it's similar to a skew. And it's very good for relief carving and also working across the grain for rounding things. It's a really good tool for that. Now you could also use some gouges um, or a skew. I mentioned that in part two. Skew is a, a very useful tool. If you've ever had a chance to see any of the carving videos online that feature Harold Enlow, he uses his skew so well. <laughs> uh, it's amazing to watch him, it really is. Okay. So now I want to continue shaping this shoe. Know that we're going to have the corners off of the shoe because we want it to be a shoe. So we'll take that corner off right there. Yeah. And we'll come over here to this corner and take that corner off there. just kind of shape the what would be the top of the shoe here so one thing I didn't bring with me is my denture brush for
cleaning out all those fuzzies. So if I have to blow on it once in a while, that's, I guess, plan B. So now I'm going to come over here to what would be the sole of the shoe. I'm going to put in this line where the heel, the front of that heel would be right there. And that's just a little stop cut. I'm going to slice over to it. Give it a little more of an angle. There we go. And then just going to remove the bandsaw marks here off the sole of that shoe. And as I said, we're kind of establishing that heel. Again, I'm going to round this front a little bit more. Why do I use this knife? Well, <laughs> sometimes it depends on the mood. Um, so Sonny's asking, why, why am I using this knife instead of a detail knife? And I said, well, yeah, it can be the mood I'm in. Um, it's also another advantage of using a utility knife with a utility blade is the profile. You can see how thin that is. This blade is thinner than any carving knife blade as far as a fixed blade knife that you'll probably ever find, right? And so. It's helpful uh, sometimes to have that kind of a blade profile. It's also flexible. Okay, so we've kind of got that shoe shaped a little more. I'm going to work on the heel now a little bit. The only real disadvantage, folks, to using this type of a knife would be any kind of a, a cut where you would want to curl your blade, right? One of those scooping cuts. The reason that's not going to work out for you is this blade is so broad from the edge to the spine, it's not going to be very good at kind of twisting. That's where you can run into a disadvantage, really, when it comes to this type of a knife. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with where we landed so far on getting that shape. Just going to clean this up a little bit right in here. And we certainly brought out that arm some more. Okay, good. So what I'll do next is work on this side of this hat. You can see, like I said, we've rounded over here. So we're going to definitely want to round that corner on this side. We want that hat brim to bend around and go back this way, like so. And while we're doing this, we're removing some bandsaw marks as well. So what I'll continue doing now is sort of working out the space around the brim. In the front, we have this fold, which is kind of a, a flap comes up above his nose and sort of sticks up above his head. Yeah, we want to maintain that. We don't want that to go away. Just making a little V cut to help bring that out a little bit right here like that. And we'll push this hat back some more. We have plenty of shaping to do, so let's do it. All 
I'm not sure what the housekeeping folks are going to think about the wood chips all over the floor, but I think I'll probably get to them before they do. All right, let's come back in here again. Get some more space behind that little brim flap in the front. And up around the top of it as well. And you can see over here on this side I brought out that brim that I showed you earlier. And to do that all I'm really doing is coming down at uh, a lower part on that brim and sort of working my blade up like that now as I mentioned this particular knife is not the best for scoop cuts so there will be time where I'll switch to a different blade The time is right now. Okay. This is the Helvey medium detail knife that you've seen me use before many times. So as I did um, a little bit earlier, just kind of starting near the edge and pushing my blade up kind of giving it a little bit of an angle. This is going to help bring out that brim. And because it's angled, it's going to uh, give it a better look than if you just try and cut that brim off and make it square. Uh, very often you'll see that it's going to have a lot of lines in it. You can see the wood grain running vertically through the uh, edge of the brim. It usually doesn't look very good and it doesn't seem to be as stable either. We will be also using this um, carving and adding a hat band to it. That'll be part of this process too. And we definitely want to bring this hair down some like we did on the other side. Uh, this is basically all I did folks is just trim that back some. And then same with the hair kind of flatten that out. I guess this would be a hillbilly haircut. That's what we'll call it. So we're getting pretty close to the autumn part of the year and my thoughts are turning toward Halloween and such and I have a pretty good idea what I'm going to do for uh, sort of Halloween carving this year. Stay tuned for that. I'll probably be um, making a video for that. You know, I posted uh, a bow tie that I carved recently. Now, let me tell you the backstory. We uh, we sprung a leak in our roof earlier in the summer, and so it was time to get the roof replaced. We um, we had the roofers out to the house, and they were 
tearing out some of the old boards from the original construction, which was from 62 years ago. And the crew that was doing the work, they were tearing some of the boards out and tossing them in the you know, dumpster that they had for the construction part. And Sonny said, well, hey, that, that looks like cedar. Is that are those cedar boards? And they said, yeah. And so she said, well, don't toss those out. I want those boards for my husband. He does some wood carving. Sonny knew that cedar was good for wood carving. That's what I started carving when I was brand new to carving. That's all we had. Um, I was working in a wilderness camp. We had cedar trees and there were limbs and branches on the ground that we would use to carve various things into. And uh, so she was able to get that cedar and I used a piece of it to carve myself a little bow tie. And I've had somebody ask me, well, <laughs> are you going to do a tutorial for that? Um, which is kind of funny, you know, sometimes I just carve stuff, right? Uh, I had no plans for this particular hillbilly to be a tutorial, for example. Just something I wanted to carve, but um, when people say, well, can you do it? Would you do it? Um, I like to say, yeah. I like to accommodate, help people learn and enjoy carving as much as I do. So uh, I'll be carving another bow tie and I may just go ahead and record it while I carve. We'll see. Uh, possibility. But I do have a Halloween thing that I want to do. So there's only only so much time, unfortunately. Because work comes first. That's what keeps the roof on the house. Okay, so I'm just working on that brim some more. Pushing back this material to have that brim come out. And I'm sure that where there, there are opportunities in this uh, video, Sonny will go ahead and speed things up for you. So it'll shorten the video. If you ever want to slow it down so you can see um, more closely what, what I was doing, you know, YouTube has some settings that will enable you to slow down the video if you want to. So just do that, right? Bring the speed down on the video if there's a part of it that you want it to see more closely. And uh, same token, if I'm going too slow, you can speed me up. <laughs> Just give me some coffee. <laughs> okay, so that brim is coming out on both sides now. So I'm going to continue giving this hat some more shape, bringing that top down some. Let's use a paring cut. Remember the paring cut? Just like this, right? Just using the hand, not your arm. Get the thumb out of the way and just pare that thing down. This is a relatively safe cut because your hand only closes so much, folks, right? Now, some people will say, well, they're not comfortable because they're pulling that blade towards their thumb. And I'll tell you, it's a pretty safe cut.
come over here and clean this up right there on the brim got a little something going on there that I wanted to clean up So we've got some folds to put in here. You can see on the original, I've got a fold kind of over here. I've got that top folding over, and then uh, I had a fold here in the back. This is just coming back from around this side. So let's go ahead and give them some folds. Come down here, I'm gonna start near the back. Just gonna put the blade in. and bring that around towards the front to about there. Then I'm just going to come back at it from the other angle. This is more or less a V-cut, right? Put the blade back in and bring it back around. Now you can do all kinds of folds. Um, don't feel like you have to put folds in the same place that I put the fold. Just think about the hat. Think about where that head is inside the hat. And where would it fold? Where would those natural folds occur? Or don't. Uh, it's yours, right? You can put them in wherever you want to. Um, I think it does help for me anyway to think about where the top of his head would be and where that material would fold. But you do you and have fun doing it. That's the important thing. All right, so I'm just cleaning up that cut a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to have that folding over just like I had with the original. And to do that, I'm going to uh, first of all bring back the top. Okay. So you can see my original center line. Center was right there. And I'm going to bring this back some at the top. Again, using that pairing cut, just Kind of bring in that top back some. Now you'll be cutting across the end grain here, folks. If you do not have a sharp knife, you'll probably know it right away. Uh, end grain is a good way to test your knife and see if your blade is sharp. If it's sharp, you'll have a nice, clean looking cut with sort of a glossy looking finish. If it's not sharp, you might have a streak or a white line through it, through your cut. Okay. All right, so now I've got that end grain cleaned off some. I'm just gonna take off this, this corner, push it over to the other side. So you can see I've kind of rounded that over. Yep. And I think I'll just uh, I'll do a little rounding on this side too. Just at the very top here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is grab the pencil and show you the mark I want. Uh, I'll come in here, kind of on an angle here, like that. So if I were to carry that around, be like that. Okay? And 
And this is just going to give us that effect where, you know, we're going to have the hat kind of flopped over at the top. That's what this will do for us. So I've made my stop cut. Now I'm just going to carve up to it. Okay, so we'll just keep doing this to get some depth underneath there. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that shape so far. I'm just going to come up here to the top and bring that back a little bit at the top. Yeah. It's got a little flat spot here at the top that I'm not really liking too much, so I want to get rid of that. Let me hit it from a few angles. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so now I'm just going to clean up some of these cuts. I'm going to come underneath that where I had the stop cut. Get that cleaned up some. Same thing here. See that stuff underneath here? Just going to work the blade along it. Just slice right under there. Clean that up. It'll look nicer when we're done, if we you know, get rid of all that junk. Those are just, you know, where you had all those other cuts, and it's going to leave lines that you want to clean up. Yeah. So I think what I want to do here, um, I'm going to add another fold. It was not on the original, but I want to put one in about right here. I'm just going to bring that thing back just like that. So we'll do what we did before. We'll put in our stop cut starting here, get the tip of the blade in, and just kind of work right above that pencil line. Curve it back to this other side and just rock the blade a little bit. Now I can just carve right up to that mark. Like I said, with these folds, you know, you can do your own thing. Put the folds where you want them. You can go with no folds at all if you want to. It's yours. It's all yours. I'm just going to go ahead and get this uh, cleaned up a little bit right here. Okay, so I think the next thing I'll do is go ahead and work on this flap here on the front, right here. First, 
I'm going to reinforce this little cut. I'm going to put a stop cut here where this kind of little fold is. Make a little V cut here. Give it some depth. Some oomph, right? Yeah. Okay. Next I'm going to take this little dockyard number six gouge. I'm just going to almost hollow out the middle of this thing. I want to leave the edges intact, but I want that flap on the front to have a little dimension to it. I'm just going to give it a little work with this gouge just to hollow it out some. And I think it helps to add some interest. Almost looks like little, little folds of its own. So that we'll do that on both sides, of course. Now, you know, you may decide not to do this. That's fine. All I'm showing you here is what I did on the original, and this is how I did it. If you do not have a gouge, you could maybe get some of this uh, same effect with a detail knife if you were scooping a little bit, you know, with your blade. So I think the next thing I'll do is go ahead and sort of pencil in the hat band. So that hat band, I'm going to say, is riding alongside that brim here. Kind of sloping down a little bit. And then at the front, the hat band is going to disappear behind that flap. I'll get my V-tool here, and we'll go to work. So we'll just come along that top edge of the hat band with the V-tool. This is a good way to get started with making these marks. Now, I'll probably come back with my knife and sort of refine the, uh, the hat band a little bit. This V-tool I'm using is a dockyard. Probably about two millimeters, it's a small one. Okay, so there's the top of the hat band. Let's go back and make the bottom. So like I said, this is just going to give us some guidelines to work off of with the V-tool. We'll clean it up with a knife. And we'll also remove the pencil marks as we go. A knife blade in here, follow along where we did with the V-tool. This is going to, of course, give it more depth. And as I mentioned, we'll be cleaning up some of the cuts too. Now, you could have done this whole thing with your knife blade if you don't have a V-tool. That's the beauty of it, right? You don't really have to have every tool. Uh, Sunny's laughing. Yeah, she knows how many tools I have, so. <laughs> but, um, she would tell you, for many years, all I had was a knife. And I think, for me, 
that was a good thing because it you know I relied on my knife to do so many things and it helped me to develop some skills with the knife that I probably wouldn't have if I had a V tool or gouges or other things handy so even if you do have the other tools you may just want to build those knife skills not a bad idea all right so I'm just kind of coming up underneath where that stop cut is for the hat band I'm going to work the other direction, pushing down. You can, of course, have yourself a hillbilly hat with no hat band. There's no reason why you have to have a hat band. It's just a little detail that you can have or not. Okay, just gonna come in right underneath that hat band again to give it more depth. Help define it. Now later on, I will be going over this with my wood burner and bring out that line for the hat band. All right. So let us go ahead and start working on the beard, the mustache, and the hair. We definitely want to get details in for those items. Just going to separate the hair from the hat right there. And so what I'll do is I'll start with this number three Swiss made gouge and just start making some shapes here with this number three. It's a very shallow kind of a curve, so it doesn't have a very aggressive sort of contour. it gives us some shapes. So I'm working on the hair right there. I'm also going to use this number three on the coat. Start getting that shape where it sort of flares at the bottom of the coat. And so I'm scooping up I'm just going to go back and clean this up a little bit, get rid of these chips. So what I want to do is work through a series of gouges, starting with this one, this number three, which is, like I said, very sort of a shallow contour. Come back around to the beard, start contouring that, and we'll work our way right into where the mustache should be too. So we've done some work with that number three gouge. Let's go ahead now and get this nose shaped. We'll take off the corners of that nose. And then we're going to start rounding over the edges.
We want to create a little shadow underneath the brim and the nose by putting a stop cut right across that part where the brim is touching that nose. And then just pushing that back a little bit. So let's add a mouth. We want to give this guy a nice broad smile. And to do that, what I like to do, what I recommend if you want to replicate this sort of a smile, is I like to put the edges of the smile up as high as the bottom of the nose. So I come to, you know, where the bottom of the nose would be and come out about a quarter inch, just make myself a mark on each side. And then from that mark, I'm just going to put a little line coming out at an angle like that. That's sort of the corner of the mouth. Same thing on this side. Put it, uh, put that mark in about a quarter inch away from the nose. Again, as high as the bottom of the nose. And get that little angle going. Then from the center of the nose, I want to come down probably a little more than a quarter inch right there in the center. Then all we're going to do is kind of connect the dots here. Okay. And you can see right away we've got ourselves a smile going on here. Let's go ahead and put in a stop cut to make that smile. So first thing we'll do is come to that corner, put the tip of the knife in from this angle, and then from the other angle we'll just kind of put the tip of the knife in again and follow along the pencil line over to the other side. Just like that. Then on this side we'll come in here from this angle again with the tip of the blade. So now we're just going to carve up to that little stop cut that we made. This is a pretty easy way to get the mouth in place. So we used our, our number three gouge. Up next, I'm going to switch over to my number nine. This has more of a sweep to it, right? It's a number nine. This is a 10 millimeter Swiss made. Again, we'll use it on the coat some. And this will give us some, some interest, some gouge marks that um, will add to the texture of that coat. Okay. Now we'll use the same approach with the hair. Again, using this number nine. Now with this, this hair, it's not that easy to get up underneath the hat brim, but uh, wherever you can, you can add a little bit more texture. Just be careful not to break off the hat brim. Come back over to the front. Same thing, work the beard. Adding some texture here. And again, you're going to be careful not to uh, take out that mouth or the nose, right? And clean it up with your knife. And now, after hitting that with that 10 millimeter number nine, 
we're going to sort of gradually come down a little bit. Now we're going to hit it with a number six. And this is just a little bit smaller because it's uh, maybe five millimeter across. Again, back on that code a little bit. Just over here and there. And on that hair, this one we can get into a little bit smaller places with it. It does have a more aggressive angle than the number three, not as aggressive as the uh, number nine that we were using. And just come back with the knife and clean up some of those chips. You don't want to dig in there with your gouge uh, to try and get those out. Uh, use your knife. One of the reasons you don't want to dig in there with your gouge, that little dockyard gouge um, doesn't take much to get a bend in it, so you don't want to abuse it. And what I'm doing here, yes, I will be cleaning all this up later, but I want to give you an idea of how to get these textures into your finished product. Let's come over to the front and we'll work on the beard some. Get back here into this corner because we can and work our way up. If you can give it some curvature, that's a good idea. So kind of curve as you go. Again, being careful not to take out the mouth or the nose. Yeah, if you can get yourself a nice little S curve in here, those always look good. All right. <laughs> that looks funny. <laughs> okay. I'm amusing myself, and that's, you know, that's part of the thing. Um, carving can be a real joy, folks, if you let it. So try not to take it too seriously. If something messes up on you, just remember you can always fix it. If something breaks, you can fix it. Remember when I broke the hat on this guy in part one? Can you tell where that was? It was right there. But it, it worked out. All right, so I'm going to be cleaning up this mouth some after. Um, but I want to keep going and show you the gradations of different gouges, and then we'll get into some V-tool work. All right, so with this one, this is a, a three millimeter. It's a number 11. And again, I'm going to come back into this hair. Just work it in here. Getting some textures. The gouge is done on the hair. We'll come back on the front now again with that little three millimeter number 11. I'm going to get in here where the mustache is going to be and start getting in some textures. And again, we'll work on some of this beard. some curves in there. Uh, 
Okay, well, I think I'll need to reestablish that mouse again. I'm just going to come back in here and get my stop cut in place, right? Come back under it. Like I was saying, folks, if you find out that yeah, it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, go back and do it again. Because you can. So what I'm going to do next is come in here with a little V tool. This one right here is a 75 degree V and another dockyard tool so just going to work it in here with the hair of course your v tool is going to add deeper sharper lines than what you get with a gouge and it works pretty well for hair Do you hear any sounds? Do we have uh, plenty of other people in the hotel enjoying their vacations? So what you're watching now, I'm just basically cleaning up several of the cuts from the gouges and the V tool and all that texturing that we were doing. Just really going back in there to get those remaining chips cleaned up a little bit. All right, so we'll now continue just adding some more lines with our V tool. Texture for whiskers and the beard and the mustache. And of course, you can also do this part with the knife. Okay, I think we have spent enough time working on that beard and mustache. Let's go ahead and kind of finish up with some folds and creating some of the illusion that we need to have these legs crossed here. You can see, right, one leg on top of the other. Folds here, folds in the coat, in the arms, the, the sleeves that is. All right. And so to achieve that, we'll go ahead and use some gouges and also V-tool. All right, so this is a 60 degree V-tool. I'm going to work it up here where the pants kind of fold as they go up into where the shoe would be. So we'll start just off the knee and kind of curve it up here like that. All right. We don't want that crease in the knee, of course, because the knee would not allow for that crease to be there. And coming off the knee here will also give it some space and sort of make a curve up under, just like that, where that other leg is. And we'll give it another 
little fold just like that. Okay. Over here on the side, we've got that knee, and we'll just make a crease back off of the knee and up underneath the coat. All right. And then on the other side here, what we'll do, we've got that knee again. And we'll just come back from the knee and kind of downward this time. Like that. Got that one? Okay. And then where that knee is folded on the inside, I'm just going to take my V-tool and come up under here. Just give it a little crease where the pants, of course, would have a crease in them right here. And again, I want to get in there with my knife to remove the chip. So you now we've got a little shadow under there, just like we should have. Now, on this side, we want to work around the heel of the shoe and create this crease, this fold where the coat bends around the back of the shoe and then follows down like that. All right, we'll also give it a fold as it's going up here. And on this side, up underneath the elbow. Again, clean that up with a knife. Now, some of these chips, they want to give you a hard time. Uh, but if you persist in your patient, you, know, you will succeed. All right. Now we'll also um, give it a few more folds here in the coat. Just kind of want to uh, have some flow going from the corner right up like this. You can see that makes a nice sort of a crease there. We'll give it one like that on this side too, from the corner, basically. And then up. And on these arms, what we'll do, we'll take our number six, and this is a, like a five millimeter gouge. We're just gonna come across the grain here and give it some folds in that coat. Just working it across the grain. And you know, this is going to show that it's sort of a, a larger coat. Just trying to define the top of that jug a little bit right here. Put some stop cuts around the sort of the neck of the jug. Just shaping it a little bit. This is another area where we want to have some roundness to it. And 
and then for the finger so what we'll do we have that thumb at the very top right and we'll have a line kind of that divides the other part here and then make another line either side of that and we'll have our fingers so we have the thumb at the top again a line to divide what's left and then lines to cut those in half then I'm just going to use my little V tool again and cut in some lines. Now you can do this with a wood burner if you feel like. Actually that's um, it's going to be too much. I'm going to use my knife and do this. But like I said, you could do this with a wood burner. It's relatively easy. If you have, um, you know, a burner tip that's fine enough. And I will go ahead and put some links in the description below. I'll show you um, the wire tip burner that I use for that. And I'll also supply a link for you um, to show you the walnut oil that I use for the finish. I can tell you that the walnut oil I use is filtered. It is not distilled walnut oil, which you would find in the grocery store. Okay. All right, let's go to the other side here. And really to finish this guy off, I would take the wood burner and burn in some lines where I have the colors touching one another. That'll help to make sure the colors don't run when I paint. I would um, give it a little walnut oil. And then the last thing I'll do is put on a finish. I use the Minwax Polycrylic. It's a water-based polycrylic. It's a matte finish, so it's not going to give you too much of a gloss, which, um, you know, sometimes that gloss would make your wine, uh, your carving wind up looking like plastic, which you probably don't want. All right, we've worked our fingers in there. And I think, folks, what we'll do is just call this one a day. Um, I will be going back to clean up a lot of stuff on here, but I think you can see what I did to get this original one finished and completed. One other thing I wanted to share, uh, share with you, you can see there's a little bit of a gloss here on the top of this jug. That's where I added some epoxy to give you that glass look. The rest of this jug is really the color of the wood. And then I would burn these three X's on here, which of course means that's triple distilled. I want to thank you for joining us. I hope you had fun carving this little hillbilly doing his yoga. Uh, we have some other things in mind, like I said, for Halloween and maybe a bow tie. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time.